Thanks so much for joining us. Um, my name is Jennifer Hamilton. I'm a physicist at Sun Nuclear, and we're excited to be bringing you a SunCheck implementation webinar today. Um, just a few logistics before we get started. Uh, we are recording this presentation, so if you get called away, um, we will send you a, a link afterwards. Um, it's also available, of course, on sunnuclear.com slash webinars. Um, all attendees are going to be muted, uh, but we do encourage you to type in questions in the question box over to the right, and we will be having time at the end for Q&A. Um, any questions that we don't get answered, if we get too many, we will send you an email about later on. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mark Young. He's coming uh, to us from the beautiful Napa Valley in California, and he's going to be discussing uh, Providence Queen of the Valleys hospitals implementation of the SunCheck platform. So their goal was to standardize their QA program. And with SunCheck, they were able to um, efficiently complete their machine QA, as well as track their patient QA throughout the entire course of treatment, including implementation of in vivo QA. Um, in addition, they are an ACR accredited institution, and you will be talking a little bit about their experience with SunCheck and the ACR. Um, so please, Join me in welcoming Mark Young, Chief Medical Physicist from Queen of the Valley. I'll turn it over to you, Mark. Hey, Mark, we can't hear you. Are you muted by chance? Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, as Jennifer said, I'm Mark Young. I'm the Chief Medical Physicist at uh, Queen of the Valley. and. Uh, here today to share our queen experience with you in implementing the SunCheck system. Um, queen of the Valley was formerly part of St. Joseph's Healthcare, which uh, merged with Providence Health, and we are now a large healthcare organization in the Western United States and even uh, in, out into the Texas area. Our hospital is in, in the world famous Napa Valley region, uh, which is well known for its uh, beautiful landscapes and vineyards and uh, uh, and its wines. Our department is uh, ACR accredited and our equipment lineup includes a Varian 21EX linear accelerator, Electaverse HD, as well as a Canon Aquilian large bore CT scanner, uh, the Ray Station treatment planning system, um, as well as the MIM Maestro system, and Mosaic for record and verify, and SunCheck for QA. So why SunCheck for us? Um, yeah, as, as part of the merger with uh, Providence Health, we ended up being an organization with over 14 radiation oncology departments in our system. And we have an oncology advisory committee uh, that directs the IT departments. And one of their goals was to standardize solutions for radiation oncology systems. And uh, the intent was to um, reduce the number of instances of installs across the health system and uh, benefit everybody from the user level to the supporters. For our department, uh, we got all of our machine QA and patient QA in one database and an efficient setup of machine tasks through uh, the preloaded templates. Uh, we get automated an anal analysis of, um, through the DICOM interface, as well as device integration for all of the SunCheck peripherals, um, and excellent uh, vendor support from the Sun Nuclear support team. When you log into SunCheck, you get a dashboard view uh, with a full clinic overview. And as you can see, there's uh, patient tasks on the left and then machine tasks on the right, um, which include uh, patient tasks that are due uh, and machine tasks that are due as well. And uh, completed tasks that need review, et cetera, as well as a historical view. Uh, the SunCheck machine or routine um, features include all of QA in one platform for all machine tests. Uh, all the TG142 tests uh, are within one single database, so you're no longer going from program to program to tie them all together. Um, templates are preloaded for all daily, monthly, and annual QA tests, and we have devi direct device connectivity for uh, the daily QA3 
IC profile or arc check, and I believe in the future, uh, the 1D tank. Um, it's got automated analysis for imaging, MLC, and VMAT QA, and it's got an embedded report generator, which has turned out to be very handy. And the benefits are a single server based uh, database, which uh, improves IT security and data integrity. Um, we've had a few incidents in our organization here where we've lost data and it's uh, catastrophic when something like that happens. So with uh, a, sing a server managed by uh, our IT department, uh, we feel really strongly that our records are in safe handling. And it's web-based, so we can access it from any computer, uh, not just uh, certain computers. Um, and uh, the standardization, standardization is able to be accomplished for all Linux and even non-Linux. Uh, we've extended it to non-Linux uh, in one platform. And it's efficient uh, to set it up, and you know that's all facilitated by the preloaded templates. Um, we no longer use paper, so um, no longer uh, typing into MS Word or Excel spreadsheets to record the data. Um, even though it's an IT system, I'm really pleased that uh, the system is still managed within the physics realm, so we can still manage our uh, local users and uh, do, uh, you know, configure all the tests at uh, the physics level. Um, the daily module is. Uh, access through therapist login and the dqa3 device interface uh, allows for instant output results and the room checks uh, mechanical and safety are all customizable um, so we we're able to get all of our um, tests configured the way we want them um, it also has all tg142 tests so we have the isocent imaging isocenter accuracy and repositioning tests all included in the daily module. Um, for the monthly and annual QA, uh, they're um, accessible through the physicist logins. They include all the TG142 tests as well as TG1, TG51. Um, all imaging, MLC, and VMAT QA tests are all included. Um, the processing of image and log files is automated and uh, really works out pretty well. And the system configuration and user administration, again, is all um, controlled by the system administrator login, which uh, in, the, in our install, I, I reserve that role. Um, and we got excellent service and support throughout the installation uh, and then even through our daily use. So the steps leading up to clinical implementation included a detailed site assessment, um, the pre-site survey that they sent out um, really hit every button. They left uh, no stone unturned. Um, every file location and uh, um, AE title, et cetera, everything was uh, addressed in advance. And once that was complete, uh, we were able to do a remote installation, which went well, went, went off very well, and we were able to complete everything in a single day, in just a couple hours, actually and verify all connectivity of all remote systems and access to all information. And then we had an on-site uh, um, training and the, the trainer was uh, very knowledgeable of, about the system and was able to teach me how to implement everything and um, you know, in just a, a one week visit. And we began with the daily QA across all the linear accelerators uh, physics set up the baselines and performed dry runs and verified that everything was working as expected. And then we had therapists uh, run the daily QA with physics before uh, letting it go clinical. And after the first day, the therapists were performing it independently. And they were really proud to say they didn't need me anymore. And for the monthly, we started off with the uh, Electolinear Accelerator, uh, which was a new installation as part of the commissioning. We selected tests from the embedded templates and customized them to match our approach. And the baseline process turns out to be critical. Um, individual tests um, obtain data via the device interface, manual entry, or from 
image and log files. And every test requires its own tolerances and uh, setting of those tolerances requires some forethought or trial and error. Um, we, at times, we were a little bit surprised that uh, some of our tests weren't passing. So we thought they were, the, the system wasn't working, but we realized that uh, the vari vari variation in test results can be um, a little bit wider since I had only performed those tests uh, qualitatively in the past. I didn't really have a good handle on what the statistical variation was. So this was a kind of an eye-opening experience. Um, the system has predefined customizable templates. Um, all 127 tests in TG142 are included, and it also includes TG, TG51. And we're, you know, we have the ability to customize those templates uh, um, to match our equipment and our, our methods. Um, once you create uh, your template, uh, you can apply it to other Linux. So as we completed our Electa, we applied the main core tests to the Varian Linux um, and then slightly modified them based on the uh, Linux differences between the two vendors. As far as tests are concerned, um, they're very flexible. Um, you can rename them, group them, uh, customize them as you wish. Um, you can add, add them as, in, as you go from the templates. Um, and you can add instructions and links, uh, images, and even videos. Um, and if you don't like what you did, you can delete it and start over. Um, and you can reorder them in any way that you feel optimizes the, the workflow to be most efficiently. And uh, once you complete that, uh, tests can be cloned um, for multiple machines, which is team and very handy. The daily QA um, module looks a little like this. We got a, a navigator view on the left panel, and what you see is um, the output test uh, on in the main screen there. Um, it's accessed through the therapist view and login, um, and all TG142 tests are included. Again, the output is via the daily QA3, which is has a direct interface and dumps its results right into the system for instant results. And the safety checks can be performed in pass, fail, or quantitatively as well. And you can tailor it to your program. Um, so we've uh, written uh, you know, some very specific reminders for uh, to steer our therapists through uh, when they're in the coffee hour. Um, one nice surprise to this was that the daily QA3s were hot swappable. Um, we were able to uh, remove our one device and use it for the other machine uh, without, you know, uh, really any kind of interruption. We actually adapted our um, daily QA module to and applied it to our CT simulator and followed the, uh, the vendor's recommendations, in this case, Canon. So we were able to monitor uh, CT number and uh, image noise as well as spatial integrity on a daily basis. And the therapists really like having uh, the system to help them guide, guide them through. Uh, monthly and QA annual modules are uh, for physics and uh, they're consistent with all TG142 categories. You can arrange them in any order you like, um, but uh, most of us prefer to do things efficiently to keep our nighttime hours down and uh, um, the util utilization of images and log files are, are really handy for automated analysis. Uh, the system does uh, all the analysis in the background and pops out the results. And a nice new feature in um, version 3, the IC profiler is uh, now available for a direct interface and can be used for output checks, energy checks, and uh, profile constancy. Um, within the monthly and annual QA modules, you can enter uh, detailed setup notes, expanded instructions, links to demo videos, um, and as you can see, you can comment on uh, on results. Uh, 
Uh, TG51 is included in the system um, in both the monthly and annual modules. Um, in the monthly module, there's a single correction factor. Uh, and then within the annual module, you have a space to enter all perturbation correction factor measurements. And uh, with the click of the mouse, you get a detailed TG51 report in the annual. Imaging MLC and VMAT QA are, can be all created from the RNV fields. Um, we created uh, picket fence and everything um, in Ray Station and sent them over to Mosaic. And now we just deliver the fields and capture the images and the um, test results are all uh, automated and the results are immediately available for review. Um, it does take a little bit of time to set up the baselines, but once they're configured and, and functioning, uh, it's well worth it. Uh, on the Electa machine, um, we all have the uh, Hancock MLC picket fence uh, test, which um, takes an image of half the field at a time, uh, and two separate images, and stitches them together and gives you an, an analysis of each leaf position. Well, this turned out to be pretty handy when we were commissioning the system and validated our MLC offset in the ray station system. Also included is the Winston Lutz test for your stereotactic uh, daily daily validation of your ISA center, um, including maximum 3D offset and individual offsets for gantry, couch, and collimator. Um, there's also enhanced uh, Hancock method for ease of interpretation of the in, uh, gantry sag and, and offset graphics. ML leaf speed is uh, basically a throw-in. Um, you just uh, deliver a uh, a predefined field, and the system will evaluate uh, the leaf speed, um, average leaf speed, and uh, any other parameters that go into uh, that test. The results are available instantly, and you can. Uh, catch any lagging leaves and uh, prevent some downtime. Um, um, for monthly QA of the non-Linux, uh, once again, we adapted the system for our CT simulator in compliance with a APM task group report 66. Uh, we send over, we, we scan the cat phantom and send it to the suncheck system and it autom the results are all calculated for all of the material um, inserts, as well as the spatial integrity. And we're able to also record the results for um, our laser accuracy as well. And uh, we're able to jot down very specific instructions on how to perform the test as well. We're the treatment planning system, we adapted the non-LINAC module as well, and we're now compliant with all of AAPM task group 53 uh, recommendations. Um, we have a verification of the DICOM tran transfer functionality, um, the CT number to density uh, integrity, as well as the dose calculation uh, um, consistency. Uh, we also check uh, the um, cat. We send also send the cat phantom over to the treatment planning system and um, keep an eye on the spatial integrity. Uh, results um, once they're complete are reviewable, and uh, you can approve them in either individual test mode or in batch uh, approval. And as you build up your history of results, um, uh, the trend button is only a mouse click away. You can get uh, uh, current month, last month, uh, any, any view or even a custom uh, time of uh, observation for any of your test results. 
this comes in pretty handy when you look at an outlier. The scheduling of uh, the tests are um, used with a treatment calendar and can be configured, uh, you know, any day of the week. One thing we found as a uh, as a pleasant surprise was that uh, during the weekend during emergency treatments, we can just instead of scheduling the test for Saturday or whatnot, uh, we can load unscheduled tests in emergency situations. So. Um, even though it's not part of our normal schedule, we, the system is uh, accessible and available for at any time. Um, in managing the monthly and annual testing, uh, we can set due dates um, with reminders of up upcoming tests and, uh, and little nag messages for when things are overdue. Um, One, one pleasant surprise was this the embedded report generator. Um, with basically a mouse click, we're getting we get a full report uh, in PDF format, and this was uh, particularly helpful for us for our ACR accreditation, and we expect it to be helpful for inspectors as well. Um, all the tests are organized according to the TG142 tables. Um, so, in retrospect, um, we uh, would, if we had to do it again, we would suggest uh, to work with the trainer to select uh, template items that mimic your current approach. Um, set wide baseline tolerances for tests without suggested criteria until statistical confidence can be reached. Uh, make detailed setup notes to help reproducibility of test conditions for more consistent results. Um, as you know, you know you're only performing tests monthly. It's hard to remember sometimes when you uh, what you did last month unless you jot it down. Uh, you may want to overlap tests if transitioning to a new test format to make sure that you're comfortable with the suncheck results are um, compatible or mimicking your prior methods. And if something is not working, call for support. Uh, they're available and um, they have all the answers to all the questions. The time we saved um, through SunCheck for our daily module, um, we actually um, probably saved about 20 minutes a day in just automating the output checks. But we refilled that time with uh, all the imaging tests from TG142. So in the same hour of testing that we were used to doing, we now have all TG142 tests accomplished. And for the monthly um, automation of the imaging MLC and VMAT tests um, and their auto analysis uh, saves us easily a couple of hours a month. Um, and we're able to do a lot more. Um, like I said, in the, it, in the past, we had only uh, reviewed these um, qualitatively, but now we have uh, quantitative uh, results which can be trended and uh, analyzed in a different way. Um, we're still building our annual templates. Um, we're doing those in sort of batches. It was a little overwhelming to try to do them all at once. So we're picking off uh, um, the output and mechanicals and safety uh, groups of tests uh, as we go. And I have to say, uh, this was a, a having the SunCheck system and all the uh, devices was a huge um, benefit for us during our recent ACR reaccreditation survey. Uh, within the physics interview, um, they gave us commendations for the QA devices, QA phantoms, and uh, patient dosimetry services uh, as we use the cone beam dose reconstruction on cone beam as an in vivo monitor. Um, we got commendations on machine QA as well uh, for adherence to TG142 for the onboard imager and MLC, and we got uh, compliments on our detailed and accessibility of our reports. So we got compliant plus ratings for those two categories, and reaccreditation was granted. Uh, 
Um, Sun Nuclear has all the phantoms available um, that uh, are needed for automated analysis, but um, they also support other phantoms. Like I, in particular, I have the Leeds phantom and Cat phantom, so they are supported as well. Um, so if you have phantoms, you you can check their compatibility list and see what uh, you need. Otherwise, they have uh, phantoms available uh, if you, if if necessary. On the patient side, um, features include uh, plan checks, independent secondary checks, uh, EPID-based phantomless pretreatment QA, and device integration with the ARC check, and in, in vivo monitoring with the with the dose recalculation on either the uh, planning CT or cone beam CT. Uh, the benefits include uh, patient QA through the entire treatment course. Um, from uh, Once the plan is spit out from dosimetry, um, we can check its deliverability, uh, do an independent uh, calculation, and uh, once treatment begins, we can monitor each, pa each uh, fraction with um, automatic dose re re recalculation. Um, Plan QA and dosimetric checks are, uh, have both point dose and 3D dose volume analysis. And the uh, phantomless pretreatment QA can be performed on the 2D EPID and also on 3D log files for uh, recalculation of dose. Um, in vivo monitoring can be accomplished on dose reconstruction, like I said, on the, either the planning CT or cone beam CT. Um, it's web-based uh, with, you know, with browser access, and that's uh, that's you know provide you know proven to be really invaluable, especially during the shelter-in-place orders during COVID. Uh, we're able to keep an eye on everything and be there for our therapists uh, when we were um, basically ordered to stay home. And uh, one database, uh, you can't say it enough. This is uh, it's easily supportable for our IT. Um, uh, they, they're, they're there and it can, you know, uh, respond to any access issues or what have you. And they work with uh, some new clear support uh, very closely to make sure everything's functioning. Uh, Pre-treatment QA or fraction zero, uh, as we call it in uh, SunCheck. Um, offers phantomless uh, pre-treatment QA and it's uh, available for all um, intensity modulated type treatments. Uh, the full 3D dose engine allows automated independent uh, calculation of log files in, on, which can be overlaid on the patient anatomy and then compared to the treatment planning system results. Um, the EPID measured 2D planar analysis for each beam um, has uh, predicted and versus measured and full gamma analysis. Um, and you can set the pass-fail criteria to whatever you, you like. Um, on top of that, you get uh, target and OAR gammas um, and DVH and dose comparisons. And once a uh, patient treatment begins, um, you can monitor the treatment um, using the cone beam dose reconstruction or just log file dose dose reconstruction on the planning CT. Uh, for all three, three, 3D treatment, all, all treatment types, including 3D, uh, VMAT, and all your stereotactic treatments. Um, you can get DV and DVH and 3D dose comparisons and get you a good, good feel for uh, how the treatment is being delivered on an ongoing basis. Um, for any particular patient, you can get a full view of the treatment timeline. Um, as you can see in the top row of that slide there, you have a, the green square with the check mark on it is the pre-treatment uh, dose check. And um, the first circle is the uh, pre-treatment pre QA. And then each subsequent um, circle is a on treatment uh, fraction analysis. Any failed results uh, present themselves with a, a really visible red exclamation point. 
Um, so for the full treatment course, we can do a plan check, secondary check, uh, pre-treatment QA, and in vivo monitoring, and we get a, a real a good snapshot view from the timeline view. Um, and all each for each fraction or um, step, uh, point dose, 2D analysis, 3D analysis, overall gamma and DVH analysis are all included. Um, you can um, set up either universal metrics, which uh, uh, the system comes uh, comes with, or custom metrics um, uh, using RTOG, Quantec, or Imami type uh, uh, tables. So we use SunCheck uh, for plan QA. Uh, and our pre-treatment QA includes secondary checks with dose check, um, which uh, the point dose verification module is very much, uh, you know, very much like we rad calc that we used in the past. But on top of that, we get a 3D gamma analysis and um, and overall gamma review. Um, the system has a, a full um, convolution superposition uh, dose uh, dose algorithm in it, and we're able to calculate uh, full dose. Um, the images uh, for spatial evaluation of any hot and cold gamma failure points uh, are available. For pretreatment QA, uh, patient-specific validation of IMRT and VMAT plans is available. Uh, we use the EPID-based um, QA. Uh, it, it's just simpler and easier and more efficient uh, for all of our non, our for all of our coplanar beams. Um, you just simply extend the imager and deliver the treatment in QA mode in Mosaic um, with uh, iView uh, image imager active, and then the, the results are automated. Um, it's really efficient, and like I said, there's, it's phantomless, so you, all you have to do is extend the imager, and um, our therapists uh, run these when I'm not available, which is, gives us a lot of flexibility since at times I'm the only physicist. Um, um, the EPID itself has a much higher resolution uh, than any other detector system, so that is kind of a, a, a hidden benefit in itself. And uh, if the distribution exceeds the area of the EPID panel, we still can uh, use the arc check and do a composite uh, measurement if needed for larger field QA. <clears throat> for in vivo monitoring, um, log file analysis on the planning CT is done for all patients. Um, it's just automatic. It's a throw-in. It, uh, it's just what the system does. And on specific cases, we can look at the dose reconstruction on cone beams and actively review whether it's okay to treat or not, um, and then make decisions on adaptive replanning if needed. Um, it's you know become uh, like a vital component to our uh, adaptive radiotherapy process, and we take a um, you know a, a deeper dive on any uh, red exclamation points. So any um, partial delivery or interrupted beam will flag you um, with a big red exclamation point. So we see those um, as as time goes by. Uh, therapists will uh, interrupt the beam if a, a patient moves or something like that. We can kind of get a feel for that, the frequency of that as well. And that's um, everything I have for today. Um, so if I appreciate everybody's attention and uh, the opportunity to share what we're doing here in Napa. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Mark. Um, I think we're all interested in coming for a site visit, of course. <laughs> but, um, we, we did have a couple of questions. Um, one of them I, I did answer online, but I'll just read it for the group. Um, so imaging tests, um, they were asking if there are imaging tests available for the Halcyon, Linac, Picket Fence, um, Etc. And on the Halcyon system right now, we support Winston Lutz MV tests and field size light rad tests. Um, we don't currently support automated um, implementation of the picket fence, but you can certainly upload the images on your own. 
And then um, questions for you, Mark. Um, so one question, how long did it take you to set up the, um, the dailies and the monthlies in SunCheck? Um, the dailies probably took us a better part of a day. Um, uh, just kind of customizing, loading everything from the templates, and then establishing the device, device connectivity, um, and then running through baselines, and then customizing all of the safety and mechanical tests, and then kind of working with our therapist to um, order they preferred to do them in. Um, so within a day, we were able to get everything established and do a full dry run at the end of the day. On the monthlies, um, things took a, a little bit longer. Um, establishing the baselines for all of the imaging tests and MLC tests takes a little bit of time because you have to like develop a plan in um, your treatment planning system that you can use for those tests. So you have to establish the fields, uh, transfer them into the record and verify system and then deliver them and then upload all the, the first results as uh, baseline results uh, so that the um, subsequent uh, tests will be automatically analyzed. So it took us better part of two to three days uh, to get uh, a full functioning monthly. Um, and that was, you know, a lot of that was um, because there's so many options, we kind of had the, you know, we're like kids in a candy store. We wanted to try everything, but then before we settled in on one particular method. Uh, so um, one of the nice benefits we have is uh, profile analysis through the EPID uh, images. So those those are, um, even though that there was uh, individual baseline set up for each one, um, now the fields are just delivered and everything's analyzed. Um, automatically. So as fast as you can deliver the field, you got results. That's great. And and Mark, just for um, the audience's benefit, Mark was one of the earlier adopters. We now, sorry, Mark, uh, send somebody out and actually create those um, RT plans for you. Um, so, um, so hopefully it'll be even, even shorter, though two to three days doesn't sound bad to me. A um, couple more questions were entered, and please feel free to keep entering them if you wish. Um, so the first question is, did you incorporate um, patient information into your weekly physics chart checks? I'm, I'm guessing she's talking about the in vivo information. So have you put any of that into your weekly chart checks? Um, if we do, a, uh, if, we are, if we review um, an adaptive or an in vivo case, we definitely jot a note um, in, in the patient notes section. Um, haven't gone as far as capturing images yet, but uh, um, because everything is stored within SunCheck, so, and we have no, um, we don't feel the need to duplicate the record since we have full confidence that our IT department is gonna manage that database and it's gonna be there if we need it. Excellent. And Sticking on in vivo, um, does the system calculate on the cone beam CT um, or is, is it just projecting dose onto the cone beam CT? It's calculating. It's calculating dose based on the delivered log files mm -hmm. um, from the, the treatment delivered and um, overlaying that result on the cone beam itself. And it's from uh, the CT number and density curve established for the cone beam. Excellent. And um, let's see, one more question. I'm, I'm probably going to take this one, Mark. Um, does the software work with the Multimet Once and Let's Cube? That's another one of our products for Multimet programs. <clears throat> so currently we have a standalone um, kind of applet, for, for lack of a better term, that works with the Multimet Once and Let's Cube. It will be um, incorporated into SunCheck. It's just on our backlog. Hopefully it will be there soon and it'll be in SunCheck machine, of course. Um, and then one more in vivo question for you, Mark. Um, were your doctors interested in, in in vivo or did you convince them? How did how did you get started with that? Well, it always starts off with, hey, I've got a patient. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Blankety Blank, uh, head and neck patient is, you know, is growing faster than expected. Are we okay to treat? And I, 
even though I had talked about SunCheck system in the past to them, they kind of didn't see the beauty of it until I said, oh, sure, let's I'll show you what's uh, done here on SunCheck. And so the results are already available. So we, you know, they're like, oh, wow, um, we can continue to treat. Yes. And so um, they caught on with that really fast. And now um, they've asked for their own access and they can kind of get a feel for everything themselves. So. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm going to steal that answer, Mark. That's a great answer. Um, I hadn't thought of that. So one one more question for you just popped up, um, and I'm not sure about this one. Do all 14 sites run from one server? So I assume they're talking about the full Providence network. Um, it's getting there. Um, my installation was uh, done locally, and we have a project in place currently to move everything to Azure. Um, so what happens in Azure is uh, I think we'll still end up in, on our own virtual servers, but um, they're all going to be, you know, in one location. Gotcha. And then same person entered a follow-up question that I'll take. Um, they asked if it was web-based or local installation. So you can um, actually choose what type of installation you want. Most of our current users are local but we have started implementing web-based um, and even uh, more recently software as a service. So uh, just talk to your district manager if you have questions about what would be most um, appropriate for your site and, um, and whether you can put it on your IT uh, people's budget or not, so, which is always helpful. Um, all right, let me see if there's any other questions. Um, think oh here's one more how often um, do your in vivo results um, pass or fail well they they will get a result on all of them 100 percent of the time um, unless there's uh, they'll, they'll fail uh, grossly for any beam that's interrupted that'll trigger a fail automatically mm -hmm. so any incomplete beams will uh, be failures um, but it depends on the criteria you ask it. If um, on, on routine monitoring on 5% dose difference and um, three millimeters distance to agreement, um, most treatments, you know, go through pretty well. Um, we see very few failures except for things that are like grossly out of whack. And when that happens, it's, uh, we, we, you know, circle like vultures and go uh, troubleshoot what's happening there. <laughs> so it, 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 it's, you can, you can, you can set the system up so that uh, it doesn't catch anything if you, you know what I mean? But uh, if you, if you want to, uh, it, it takes some trial and error to find the right balance. And I think the um, passing criteria can be site-based. Yeah, definitely. Um, and that's a great point. When you're, you know, when you've got a living, breathing patient on the table, you do want your criteria to be different than when you're using a, an arc check or a phantom. Um, yeah. and there, there's a really thorough publication on that for anybody who's interested. It's on our website um, by Evie Bosut um, at Iridium Canker Network, and she's uh, done something like 56,000 fractions of in vivo. So it's a really thorough look at it. Um, all right, um, I think that is it with that. Thank you very much, Mark. I uh, really appreciate your time and I will sign off. All right, thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thanks.